Welcome to the channel. Thanks for watching the video. If you would subscribe, comment, let me know what you think. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Appreciate everybody that's been subscribing, that's watching the videos. Today I want to talk to you about for sale by owner real estate. Uh, you've seen the orange and black signs in the yard and the piece of property out there. Uh, maybe you found these for sale by owners on Craigslist. I want to give you five tips today couple bonus tips as well and stay tuned to the end I'm gonna talk a little bit about the concept of uh, you make your money when you purchase the property and how that plays into uh, for sale by owners type of deals some people call them off-market properties uh, no matter how you found them these tips are gonna work out well uh, let's go ahead and get into it and if you would subscribe thumbs up the video like it get the notifications going appreciate everybody that's been watching the videos so my first tip is ask the right questions. When you get these sellers on the phone, um, you, you need to have a couple questions that you're gonna ask them. And, and most of the time, I've got a pretty standard list of questions that I that I ask them. Even if, you know, I'm looking at the sign, you know, and I bought a lot, buy a lot of vacant land, so that's normally what I'm doing. But if, if I'm looking at the sign, or I'm looking at it on Zillow, or it's on Craigslist, or it's on Marketplace, wherever I found it, and it's got the price right there, I'm still gonna ask them, how much are you asking for the property? Even if I'm staring at the price when I'm talking to them on the phone, and if it's, you know, let's say it's $50,000 for this piece of lot is what, piece of land is what they're asking, I'm still gonna ask them, how much are you asking for the land? Because they may give you more info or maybe when they put that sign together, they were pretty confident that they could get $50,000 and things have changed or in their mind, they're getting anxious. Nobody's been making any offers. Nobody's been calling and, and they'll give it to you a lot of times. Well, I was asking 50, but you know, I'd probably take 40 or whatever, you know, let them give you a number. So I always ask them and make them rethink what they're asking for it and how much they would take for the property. And then when they give me a price or what they're asking for, then I always ask them, okay, um, $50,000, tell them the price back. And then I ask them, is that price set in stone? Are you negotiable on that? And, and just let them talk again. You know, well, you know, I, I did one recently and they were asking 54,000 for it. And uh, I, I asked these questions and she, she ended up saying, well, somebody offers 44,000 and I wanted to take that immediately. But my dad said, no, he wanted 50,000. So there you go. I got a lot of info just out of asking that one question. And then I ask them to find out what kind of time frame they're looking at. I say, if we can come to an agreement, when would you like to close or what kind of timeline do you have for closing? That's going to bring up a lot of issues. Well, we can close as soon as possible or we're ready to close like yesterday, trying to figure out how motivated they are. And also if there's any problems, well, there's this issue with this estate that we need to work with this uh, real estate attorney or uh, a probate attorney, or there's such and such going on behind the scenes. And you can dig up some more information there as far as what kind of timeline they're looking at and if there's any other issues surrounding the property. And then I always ask, well, does the property have any liens on it? Does it have any back taxes? Anything like that? And then again, just I, I stop right there and I let them talk and they'll give you so much information that you can use in your negotiations and your research. After you ask them these questions, you may want nothing to do with the property, but you've asked the right questions you know where you're at, you know where they're at, and it gives you a better informed platform to negotiate off of or to make a decision one way or the other. Um, another one I, I always like to ask or get this information out on too is, are you the only owner? The person you're talking to may not even be the owner at all. They may be doing it for their elderly parents. Um, I've seen a cousin, I've bought them before where um, the last two that I've done actually the person that I was talking to was not the only owner or not the owner at all And they were working on a friend's behalf one was a cousin and one was a child or, You know a grown adult child Helping their parents and they were all in a partnership on it um, So you never know who you're talking to or who all you need to be talking to um, You may come to an agreement with some one person that you're talking to <coughs> and then find out 
you haven't been negotiating or talking to everybody involved and these other people may have different ideals. So that's always good information to find out if they're the only decision maker, if they're the only owner or, you know, what all is going on there. So I always ask, are you the only owner of this property? And I've done some research too, normally looking through the tax rolls and stuff to see who the property's registered to, who's paying taxes on it and stuff like that too. So, um, and then another good one too, going back to price, you know, is what is the lowest price that you would take on this property? Or what do you think the lowest price that we could go on this property is? I'm not trying to lowball you, but uh, I am working on a budget here. And what do you think the lowest price that you would be agreeable to? Something along those lines. <clears throat> really trying to get them to give you their bottom dollar. You know, when there's no realtor involved, there's no buffer there. <clears throat> so you could be talking to somebody that just gonna give it to you straight out. You know, the realtor a lot of times knows that, yeah, their client may take a lower price, but their job is to get the most money for their client. So when that realtor is gone, you know, a lot of times if you ask a real estate agent, well, what's the lowest price your client's gonna take? If they're any sort of good real estate agent, you know, they're going to give you that list price. Well, he's asking 50,000 for it, or he's asking a hundred thousand or she wants a quarter million, you know? <clears throat> and if you want to offer less than that, well, you can write up an offer. But with, when you're dealing with a for sale by owner and you're talking to the owner, you just ask them, what's the lowest you'll take. And you may be surprised sometimes how much they'll come off of that, you know, and, and you're not going to get that when you're negotiating with a real estate agent most of the time. And so that's, you're taking that buffer out, which a lot of times is good from a negotiating standpoint as the buyer trying to get that lower price. So those are some questions that I try to ask a lot of times as far as price and stuff like that. I also ask <clears throat> how long have you owned the property? And a lot of times that's me trying to get their motivation for selling. Um, you know, have you owned it for a long time? Is this, did you just buy it and you're trying to sell it? Did plans change? Why do you need to sell it? You know, I'm not asking directly why do you sell it, but you know, how long have you owned it? Um, which helps me get their motivations for selling. Also another negotiating tool for me um, to use in, in the negotiations. When vacant land, and a lot of times I'm buying vacant land and lots and acreage and things like that. I'm, al I'm also asking them if it's in the city limits <clears throat> or if it's in the county or what jurisdictions it's in. I'm asking about utilities, water, sewer, gas. Uh, I'm looking for electric, electricity. I'm looking, does it have electricity hooked up? Or are there poles there? Or was there a building there before? So I'm trying to find out about utilities. I'm asking them about it too, because they can give you good information there. If they know, <clears throat> they may tell you, well, there's an old water well on there, or there's a old septic system on there, or there's, never been anything out there as far as we know you know you're just trying to get more information to see you know if you're going to have problems or if you've got you know improvements that have already been done you know a lot of times a water well is an improvement to a property i'd always get that inspected and then a septic system a lot of times that's you know it was an improvement at one time but it's probably gonna be a problem you know going forward is the way i look at it maybe not in all situations but a lot of times those are problems um, you know, and, and does it, does it have all this stuff? Does it work? How old is it? You know, does it already have city utilities? Are they even available at all? And then I'm calling the city, I'm calling the utility departments. I'm trying to verify that stuff if, if it goes further. So those are some good questions that I'm asking on for sale by owners. And that's number one right there. Just ask the right questions, get good information out of these folks and, and kind of take it from there. It, and, uh, a lot of times <clears throat> the answers that you get to these questions will help you in your negotiations or will give you more information. And a lot of times they'll dig up information that you weren't even thinking about, or it'll make them rethink what their property is. You know, in their mind, it may be one thing. When you start asking these questions, I say, you know, I was asking a hundred thousand for this property. Look, if you'd give me 70,000, I'd be happy and I'd go on about my business. Great you know, let's, let's see what we can do. So that's why, that's my motivation for asking these questions is to uncover more info, to get them thinking about their property, get them thinking about where they're at and see how, 
how this deal and how this property would work for me. Okay, number two on tips, tricks, ideals, thoughts, just some things that I think about and deal with for sale by owner is understanding really what for sale by owner means for you trying to purchase this property. Basically, in its simplest form, <clears throat> it means that the owner is trying to market or is marketing for sale their property without a real estate agent involved. And basically, they're normally, I see this two things that normally motivate or cause somebody to market their property for sale by owner without a real estate agent. <clears throat> and the number one normally is that they're trying to save on that commission, that 6% or 5%, whatever commission they're paying, they're trying to save on that. And then the second one that I see a lot of is that they fail to see the, the value that a real estate agent can provide in that transaction. A lot of times they're overconfident that they know everything about the property, about the neighborhood, and that they honestly in their heart and head or and logic and everything they don't see where a real estate agent can help them they know it all they know what they want for the property and they can handle it all themselves and so they're not going to hire a real estate agent pay them six percent and you know why do i need them i'm not going to pay them for something i can do myself i'm good to go forget it you know and and that second one is where as a buyer as an investor you can make most the most profit you know i recently did one <clears throat> it was a for sale by owner marketed on zillow and the other section other listings this lady was um she was the owner and there was also a trust involved with her parents and she was a real estate agent in another state and she thought she had it all figured out she knew what you know she you couldn't tell them anything and I wasn't going to try to, you know, I negotiated the price from, I talked about it earlier from 54,000 to 50,000 is what we ended up settling on. Cause that's what her dad wanted. She was happy with whatever she could get really. And you know, she priced it wrong, you know, and you know, this property is worth easily $130,000 and you know, I bought it for 50,000. We split the closing costs, which weren't much at all. I don't even think they probably came out to a thousand dollars for each side of it. And that was it, you know, because of that second one, you know, sh you know, and there's, <clears throat> there's lots listed up and down this particular street in this neighborhood for anywhere from, you know, sixties to a um, hundred thousand dollars a lot. And I bought two lots from her, you know, and, and it's that real estate agent can really add value in that sense because they're not connected to the property. They don't think they you know, know everything. They have a lot of tools that you don't as a, as an owner, but as a buyer going in and looking for it, that's great when they have that attitude, when they think they know it all, <clears throat> I I'm ready to go. I, I don't try and tell them anything different. I'm not going to argue with anybody and I'm just going to go in there and do the deal because I've done my research. And so when you see that, just let it go, you know, and you, just because they don't want to work with a real estate agent doesn't mean that you can't work with a real estate agent. So that's another thing that I try and keep in mind when thinking about what for sale by owner means. That's basically a decision that the owner has made that they don't want to work with a real estate agent. And so that doesn't mean you can't consult with one or call them up. You know, there's a lot of real estate agents out there that would be happy to talk to you or, you know, maybe they can give you comps for that neighborhood or that street or that you know, you can just tell them, look, I'm looking to buy property in this area. Can you give me any recent sold comps to see what, you know, property in that area is going for? And they'll be happy to crank that out for you. And, and, you know, because they're looking for clients all the time, you know, and even if you don't buy from them, you may be a source of referrals that says, hey, this person, this real estate agent, she really helped me out. Here's her card. You need to talk to her or you need to talk to him. And, you know, so they love to talk to people about real estate. That's what they do, you know? So just because that owner doesn't want to sell through a real estate agent doesn't mean that you can't talk to one as a buyer and it probably not going to cost you anything. And, you know, you can be upfront with them. Like, look, I'm buying this property and I'm looking at buying some property and, and just be honest with them. But 
for sale by owner is the decision that the property owner has made. And, you know, they, they want to save that money a lot of times, or they think they know everything. Some will see, you'll see them advertised, you know, for sale by owner, but realtors are welcome. And then they'll lay out the commission that they'll give, you know, sometimes two and a half percent, three percent. So they're basically saying, look, I don't want to hire a real estate agent, pay them six percent to market it. I then pay, you know, also when it sells the full six. But if you have a buyer, bring them on. You know, if you're a real estate agent and you have a buyer for my property, please call me. Pr please bring them by. I'd be happy to give you three percent. But I just think 6% is too much. Okay, so that's another for sale by owner strategy that I see quite a bit. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, you're going to need other people as well. Keep that in mind. And they will also, they're still going to be expenses. So you're not going to pay that 6 As a seller, they're not going to pay the 6%. But there's also going to be a title company, surveyors, things like that. They're going to need to be taken care of. And understand that if you... If they're not going to use a real estate agent and you're not going to use a real estate agent and it's just going to be a strictly for sale by owner you're going to have to shepherd that whole deal and you're going to have to do everything that a real estate agent would do as an investor a lot of times i don't work with real estate agents you know because i'm finding these people that are motivated sellers or you know they've got a for sale by owner sign in the yard or whatever the case may be and i'm happy to do you know the title company get them involved get the surveyors involved do the research you know all the financing whatever without the help of a real estate agent and just keep that in mind that you know that's what for sale by owner means that there's going to be it's basically a decision by the property seller not to use a real estate agent <clears throat> but that doesn't mean that you can't use a real estate agent for just bouncing ideals off of or if you want to get them involved you could even tell that seller look I'm interested in your property. Uh, I'm not comfortable working by myself without a real estate agent. I have this real estate agent that I'd like to use. Would you pay her two and a half percent or would you pay her three percent or whatever? Would you be okay with that? And a lot of times they're going to see the dollar signs and be like, yeah, that's fine. You know, if you've got somebody you want to use, I'm happy to pay them two and a half percent or three percent or whatever to get this deal done and to get paid and, and go on about my life never hurts to ask you know so that's another strategy to use just understand what for sale by owner means and the different complexities that you get involved in a lot of times you can ask the title company that you want to use find a local title company and just go in there and ask them <clears throat> i'm doing a for sale by owner deal what would i need and then just let them talk you know they'll tell you what you need you're going to need a contract that lays out all the terms um, and this is how much a title policy would cost and things like that and get that, you know, that's free to talk to people. It's free to talk to real estate agents. It's free to talk to uh, title companies. It's free to call and ask how much things cost, you know, what you're looking at, what the process is, what the time frame is, things like that. So keep that in mind with a for sale by owner, um, type of property. Keep in mind how <clears throat> the closing is going to work with a for sale by owner. <clears throat> and it's basically the same as if there's a realtor in a lot of aspects, but the difference is you're going to be the one having to make sure things get pushed along. The realtor is not going to be sitting there with you at the closing table. They're not going to be scheduling anything for you because they don't exist. So it's going to be up to you and to the seller to get all this together. So just get comfortable with how the closing process works and what it's going to take to get there. And that goes back to the title company who's really going to handle a lot of the closing type of stuff, even on a for sale by owner. So I would call the title company or go by there and talk to somebody that can help you out and just ask them, like I said, you know, what, what does the process look like for a for sale by owner deal? And just let them talk and tell you, what are you going to need from me and from the seller on a for sale by owner deal? And then let them go from there. A lot of times it's just, you know, you're going to have to get a contract together. You submit that contract to the title company and they'll escrow it. And then they'll deal with the seller and they'll deal with the buyer separately and get everything they need from the seller. If they have any questions or there's any issues with the title or anything like that, they'll talk to the seller. They'll get any documents needed from them, whatever they need from you as the buyer. They'll get that together 
and they kind of ensure the smooth process through that. <clears throat> they'll, it, they'll research the title, uh, they'll escrow the contract, <clears throat> they'll handle the money, who gets it, where it gets split, you know, all that is handled by the title company. <clears throat> but you need to get familiar with that, and maybe it's different in different parts of the country or different areas, and so you need to familiarize yourself with a local title company and get that information from them. Free to go in there, free to talk to them, free to get some information. You're gonna have to pay a little bit of money at, you know, when the closing goes through, you're probably gonna have to pay <clears throat> escrow fee. You're probably gonna have to pay for a title policy, depending on how that gets split. And uh, you know, you can find out how much that costs. They can estimate a total for you on those type of things. And so that's what you wanna find out from the title company. Um, and that's, that's basically it. You know, you wanna get a good title company as far as how the closing works you know then talk to the seller as well you know if they have anything in particular that they want to make sure that you know the closing goes a certain way or they like this title company or they don't like that title company you know figure all that out but just have a good idea of how the closing works and you could talk to multiple title companies you could talk to a real estate agent say look i'm doing this for sale by owner thing um, can you tell me how closing normally works or how long does that take? Ask, ask the title company. Well, if we submitted the contract, how long would you guys need to, you know, to do all your research and all the paperwork before we could actually sit down and close 30 days, two weeks, six weeks, what's it going to take and, and get that ideal there. So you, you know, everybody's expectations are on the same page. The seller knows what it's going to take you as the buyer knows what it's going to take um and nobody's getting crazy when you know it hasn't happened in you know a week you know so just get an idea ask the title company a lot of questions and get familiar with how the closing works a definite tip too to keep in mind on a for sale by owners and it goes kind of back to the title companies and all those other things but understand the work that you're going to have to do as the buyer um, on a for sale by owner type of deal, you know, you're going to have to find these deals. And I'm kind of coming at this from an investor perspective, not necessarily like you're looking for a house to move into or something like that. But if you're looking for for sale by owner off market properties, uh, what you're going to have to do, you're going to have to look for them. You're going to have to find these deals. You're going to have to negotiate, you know, not only the price, but the terms and how the closing is going to work and who's going to pay for what, who's going to do what. Uh, you're going to have to negotiate all that because there's going to be no real estate agent in the middle. You're going to have to communicate with these people and communicate well. Uh, a lot of deals can go bad if, you know, if the communication's off. Um, they thought you were going to do something. You thought they were going to do something. Then people start getting upset. There's a lot of anxiety going on in these deals. A lot of times this is the first time they've sold real estate or you know first time they've done a for sale by owner maybe the first time you've done it uh or maybe they just don't do them very often there's a lot going on there's a lot of emotions stuff like that so if communication's off and they feel you know it can go sideways pretty quick if if you're not communicating with them or they don't feel comfortable and there's no real estate agent there a lot of times that real estate agent you know with a buyer or a seller is their comfort in them too, like, oh, well, it's gonna be okay, and I'm gonna walk you through, and I'm gonna hold your hand, and we're gonna and we're gonna get through this together, and I'm gonna give you a nice gift basket at the end, and everybody's gonna be so happy, and it's gonna be sunshine and rainbows, and, you know, without that real estate agent there, it's all on you and on them and getting it all together. You're gonna have to shepherd all this together, and you're gonna have to make sure it all works, and everybody, you know, makes it to the finish line, and, and, if you can't do that, the deal will fall apart and it can fall apart. And then you're going to see it a week later listed on the MLS with a real estate agent. And it's going to be twice the price that you had ever thought about paying for that property. And then they're going to get that price. And then you're going to realize that, you know, I could have made all that money, you know, that property that you could have bought for 50,000. If you would have shepherded that deal, right. If you would have taken care of it. Now they talk to a real estate agent and the real estate agent told them, You're, you would, should not accept anything less than $120,000 for this property. And they were about to sell it to you for 50,000. And there it is. And then somebody's gonna go in there and buy it for 120,000. You just lost, you know, whatever money there. So keep that in mind. That's the, the value that you can bring by making sure 
that you've got all your ducks in a row and there's more than five tips out there. You need to do your research and just make sure that you understand what you're gonna have to do, what your role is and make it happen because these are some of the most profitable deals that I've done is for sale by owner, you know, or off market property type of deals. But just keep in mind that there's nobody to blame except for you if it doesn't go right, you know, or, you know, you have to be accountable to yourself to get these deals done. And there's nobody else there. There's no real estate agent holding anybody's hand to get this done. If there's a real estate agent there, well, that's probably because they quit talking to you and they went off and called the local realtor and now they've moved on and that deal's done for you. And you've got some lessons learned and that's it. So you know, keep that in mind of what you're going to have to do and make a list, you know, of, of to get this, you know, get your legal pad or a piece of paper and, you know, or put on your iPad or whatever. And, you know, okay, to get this deal done, what do I need to do and make a list of everything you're going to have to do. I need to call these people. I need to check on that. I need to make sure of this. I need to follow up with the seller. I need to let them know I'm still interested. I need to let them know I do have the money. I do have the financing, everything, you know, don't worry about anything. I've got it all handled. We're going to get through this together, you know, and, and have your ducks in a row and come across as somebody that's got your ducks in a row when they're talking to you. Um, you don't want them to have no confidence in you either. Like, oh, this guy wants it, but I don't think he can get it done. And then you need to follow up with these people and say, look, I am working on it. This is what I did today. I talked to the title company. They've got a set. Um, this is the date we're going to close. This is how much, you know, title policy is going to cost. This is how much escrow is going to cost. You want to split that down the middle. You want to pay for all of it. You want me to pay for all of it. What do we got to do to get the deal done? And then they're going to think, okay, she's really working on it. He's really working on it. They know more about this than I do, or they've got a good handle on things. They're confident that you're going to be able to, to see this deal all the way through. And that's what you want to come across as confident in the deal. And so just understand that you need to have that demeanor and you really need to know what you're talking about, or you need to figure it out before you start doing the deal. And uh, that's really going to help your for sale by owner off market property type of deals go smooth. A good thing to keep in mind too, is that for sale by owner is not always advertised. There's not always that black and orange sign or that white and red sign sticking up in the grass in the lot in front of the house that says for sale by owner, call me at this number. This is the price. It's not always that easy or it's not always, um, in that box. It's not always on the internet. You're not always going to see them on Zillow or on, um, Craigslist or a marketplace or wherever you're looking, um, you may be the initiator too. Um, you may be networking, you may be advertising, or you may just know somebody or a neighbor or somebody down the street. Nobody's living in that house. You may ask, what are you going to do with that piece of property? What are you going to do with that house? So keep in mind that these are not always, you know, cut and dry. This is how you find for sale by owner. Or this is how you find off market properties. Um, there's lots of ways. Yeah, that sign may be there and that's great. You know, driving around for dollars or driving for dollars and looking for these signs. Yeah, I've bought them that way myself. I've bought them off of Craigslist. I've bought them off of Facebook. I've bought them off of, you know, wherever. I've seen signs nailed to trees. Um, I buy them on Zillow. I bought them, you know, however, somebody may come up to you and say, hey, what do you do for a living? Well, I, I buy real estate. Really? What do you mean? What kind of real estate do you buy? Any kind of real estate. Or if you have a particular area, I buy land, I buy lots, I buy houses, condos, mobile homes, mobile home parks, RV parks, you know, whatever you buy, commercial property, ugly properties, pretty properties, houses, Airbnbs, whatever you buy, tell them you buy it. Let them know that you buy it because they may have a an inherited piece of property. They may have a divorce property. They may have all kinds of stuff where they know somebody going through something. Oh, I didn't know you bought real estate. Yeah, I sure do. What do you got? You got something you want to sell? And then let it go from there. Or if you see that sign in the yard, call them up, send them a text. Hey, I saw your sign. What's going on? You know, and go through all those questions. Would you own or finance this? Would you, you know, what do you want to do with it? You know, and just get the ball rolling. You know, they're not always advertised. 
keep that in mind, but they're always out there. There's always somebody looking to sell these properties. And that's one of the things that you've got to be open-minded when looking for these properties too, is that there's not one cut and dry way that you're going to find them. And there may be a real, real, real estate agent who had their sign in the yard. They didn't sell it. Now they're stale listings. Now these people are just going to keep it. And then you can go talk to them. You know, what's going on? I found them through um, landlords that, you know, just don't want a landlord anymore. And I ask them, you know, do you have anything for sale? I know you're renting these houses, but do you have anything for sale? Um, yeah, I do. Or no, I don't. Or keep me in mind if you have anything you want to sell. You know, they may have 10 houses and they may sell them all to you and they may finance it and, you know, move on. You never know. And that's why you always got to keep an open mind. You always got to keep an open eye and you got to let people know what you're doing. You know, I'm buying real estate. I had a one come to me, like going into the title company. The guy went into the title company and told him I'm going to sell my house. I have a rent house. I'm tired of the tenants. I just got them kicked out. I just got them evicted. I'm done with the house. It needs a lot of work. So I want to do a for sale by owner. What am I going to need to do? And the lady at the front desk at the title company told them, well, why don't you call this guy? And so he said, well, how do I get a hold of him? She said, he's got an ad in the newspaper. I know because I, I run a little ad, you know, about this big in the newspaper. I buy real estate, local investor, put my phone number in there and I get calls off of it. And so he went, bought a newspaper, found my number, called me up and said, Hey, I got your number from the lady at the front, the receptionist at the title company. She said, you buy real estate? Yes, sir, I do. Went over there. Within two days, we had a deal, wrote it up, done. Bought the house, remodeled, sold it. He was happy, I was happy, but you never know where, you know, before that, he had the sign in the living room of the house that he was gonna put out for sale by owner. And I, I got there before that sign even came out because of a referral from the title company. And so you just gotta keep an open mind and an open eye of where these deals can come from and, and let it be known what you're doing. So keep that in mind as well. And just, you know, always know that there's deals out there. And if one thing's not working for you, try something else. And then you're sowing seeds too. And you know, that thing that you're doing that doesn't seem to be working for you, you know, it may come around in a year and somebody's like, hey, I saved your ad from the newspaper and it's been on my refrigerator and I wasn't ready to sell it, but I cut it out and I put it on the, you know, I mean, people think, oh, you gotta be online. You gotta do this and that. That newspaper ad has made me six figures, you know, just in a, in a little newspaper. And it's probably the most, you know, elementary form of advertising. And it's not the only thing I do, but it's one of the things I do. So keep that in mind that you know you've got to have different streams coming in so maybe i get a call every once in a while from the newspaper maybe i get a call every once in a while from a personal referral maybe i get a call every once in a while from you know a neighbor of a house that i flipped a while back or something like that so you never know but you're spreading you're spreading the seeds you're letting people know what you do you're driving around you're looking for signs stuff like that so so all that kind of comes together and uh, we'll help you in the, in the long run. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this up. I'll try to give you some good ideas, some tips, some things that you can use when you're dealing with a for sale by owner situation or an off-market property situation. Um, this isn't probably the expert end-all, do-all, be-all guide to for sale by owner or off-market properties, but just you know, hopefully one thing from this video helped you out at one point. And I'm gonna wrap it up with a couple other things that maybe will help you also, or just keep in mind why for sale by owner and off-market properties should be on your radar. And basically the benefit as a buyer and an investor and these for sale by owner deals are not marketed as well as an MLS type of property, uh, property listed with a real estate agent. So with an MLS listing, you're gonna get every eye that's looking in the whole area to see that property. It's gonna pop up on the internet. It's gonna be on all the big websites and everybody's gonna get a chance to look at it. So you've got a lot of competition. You know, you can have bidding war just and all that crazy stupid stuff that you don't wanna get involved in as an investor. 
An off market or for sale by owner can be marketed at any level of that, you know? So, I mean, they can get on the MLS through some of these other uh, listing services and things, but you know, if you're talking about a, a yard sign compared to an MLS listing, I mean, talk about the difference in eyeballs and attention that that property is going to get. So there's less people looking and the good deals are going to have less competition, if any. So, you know, that guy that just put a yard sign in the yard with for sale by owner, he's only going to get the cars that drive by that property. He's only going to get, you know, the neighbors that look at it. He's only going to get, you know, a small audience. And if you happen to find that property, there it is. Or if, if you're looking in the, the newspaper and nobody's reading the newspaper hardly looking for real estate, they're all on the internet looking for real estate. Not that many people are looking at that. So you're going to have a smaller bidding contingency that, you know, nobody else is going to be looking at that besides a few people. It gives you a better opportunity to go in there and buy those. Um, I've bought for sale by owners off of Zillow in the other section. So you got to go over there and click on it. Uh, then you go down and there's the for sale by owners, but it's not, you know, when you go to Zillow and you look, you're going to have all the MLS properties. And if you want to see the other ones that are um, for sale by owners and other type, you know, you got to go click on the other side and then it gives you those. If not everybody's looking at those. Not everybody knows that, that it's there, even though the button's right right there on the homepage. Um, so you, that's what I'm looking for. Less competition. They priced it themselves. They may not have done a lot of research or they may have just had it in their mind. I know it's worth this much or I just need to get this much or who knows what's going on inside people's minds. But if you're analyzing the market and you've got a pretty good idea of what you're getting into and they've put in their own whatever analysis, if those if there's a big gap there, then that's basically embodies the term of, you know, you make your money when you buy or you make your money when you purchase the property. You know, if these people only need to get fifty thousand dollars for it and you know it's worth a hundred and twenty that the day you close on it, you've just made that 70,000. If your numbers are right and their numbers are wrong and that's it, that spread right there, I mean, you, you did good, congratulations, woohoo! You know, you, you made it happen because that 50 that they needed, that they came up with, that's the price. They didn't consult with a real estate agent or any local market experts. They just needed 50. You did your research, it's worth 120, or you talked to a real estate agent and they said, if you had that property, we would list it for 130,000. There you go, that gap in the middle is pretty close to, you know, you can figure simple math, you did good, right? So keep that in mind. Um, the equity is there the day you purchase and, and you're basically rewarded for seeing that value that the seller and other buyers didn't see and that's where being a real estate investor, you know, you've got to do your homework. You've got to go through all that stuff that we talked about, but you've got to see value where others don't see value. And you can do that a lot with for sale by owners because it's basically you seeing value versus them seeing value. And if there's a big difference there, that's your equity. That's yours. That's what you're getting paid for doing your work and, and putting it in and doing the research. So keep that in mind. I do appreciate you watching the video. I plan to do some more for sale by owner type of situations, maybe some case studies over properties that I've purchased. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got at least one good thing out of the video. Thanks for checking out the channel. Subscribe, like, comment, thumbs up, thumbs down. Anything you give me helps. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.